indeed his parents are unknown. On pictures, she is shown with one of these elongated heads. Ancient civilizations hold the secrets to many of life's unanswered questions. From medicine, physics, and early contact with extraterrestrials. In this episode of After the Lights, we will review three civilizations from Egypt, India, and Mexico. From flying saucers, elongated skulls, the scientists claim are not human. And for the finale, the first ancient Mayan astronaut. All you need to remember is... All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Then strap in. Don't forget to comment your theories and experiences down below. Smash that like button. And without further ado, I present to you, After the Lights, Episode 2. When you think of the word royalty, you think perfection, right? Well, my dear friend, listen to this. Some Egyptian carvings and remains of specific pharaohs and their wives tell a different tale. Tell me what this and this have in common. Well, why did the Egyptians carve Nefertiti, who was one of the most beautiful women in the land of ancient Egypt, with a head the size of a Chinese watermelon. Was it inbreeding between the family? Or is it just that Nefertiti was a byproduct of extraterrestrial crossbreeding? That's what I wanted to find out. First, her parents are unknown, which is quite mysterious to me. Such a high profile person, yet no manuscript or scroll talks about her parents. Now this next part had me thinking, According to an old Egyptian text, it reads, Sometimes the elongated head gods left the earth and later returned. So there is a possibility that Nefertiti was not of this world. And her parents could have been these gods that came and left the earth. A similar character to Nefertiti was her husband, King Akhenaten. These two look different from any other kings that came before them. However, Akhenaten had a more unnatural look. Like I said, to rule out inbreeding, I tracked down his parents. And no, there was no recording showing King Akhenaten's parents were indeed related. Now, Akhenaten was a very unusual fellow. He had elongated hips, an enlarged skull, a belly that overlapped his belt. And the man believed that he was not human, saying that he's not a man or a woman, but a superior creature. That has to be evidence, pointing to the fact that he knew he wasn't human. In 1907, Akhenaten's tomb was found. It had no name, so before they knew who or what it was, they just named it Tomb 55. The tomb was bare. It had nothing but a stone coffin designed in a way to suggest that the Egyptian priests were not protecting the contents inside from the world, but the world from whatever was inside. His coffin had no face with the name scratched off to indicate they weren't just trying to wipe him from history but the future as well. Get this. At the entrance of the tomb, the priest wrote, the evil one shall not live again. So there is a very strong possibility that this man was not of this world. Finally, in Paracas, Peru, 
several elongated skulls were recovered. Scientists noticed something strange. They were the same age as Tutankhamun, which didn't make any sense. Let me explain something for context. Cranial shaping is a form of ancient cosmetic beauty, where an infant's head is tied together to elongate the skull. Remember, you can change the shape of the head, but never its volume. But the Paracas skulls have a different story altogether. The skulls are 25% larger and are 60% heavier than normal human skulls. In 2014, DNA tests showed that these skulls are not human. In 2016, again, they did the same DNA test. And the results came back the same, with additional information. The domes were from the Middle East, leading us back to ancient Egypt. How did they get to Peru with no recollection of travel or communication between Peru and Egypt? Now to India. Just like the Egyptians, the Indians have some very peculiar infrastructure. Now, let me welcome you to the Colossus Temple, a complex of cave temples known as the Ellora. Here, there are over 30 cave temples carved out of solid rock on the side of a mountain. Not only is this an incredible work of art, but studies have shown that the Elora Caves only took 18 years to construct. I know this sounds like a long time, but get this. Within those 18 years, the builders scooped out over 400,000 tons of rock. That's not even possible today with our advanced technology. Let me introduce you to someone. Meet Madame H.P. Blavatsky, the author of The Secret Doctrine authored in 1888. She asserts that the European scholars and archaeologists were wrong about the Allura. She states that the natives are the only ones with an understanding of the simple fact that beneath sites like the Allura, there are passages that lead to other super caves where there are energy machines and other devices from the world before. My question is, According to ancient Indian text, is it true that the natives were gifted technology that helped them carve these caves with the push of a button? Because it's not possible to achieve such a feat and have no aftermath. There are no rock deposits near the temple. So where did it all go? 400,000 tons of rock don't just vanish into thin air. Then I found a passage from an old text that mentioned such a device. It's called the Baumastra. It clearly says that this machine had the capability of vaporizing solid rock. So what do you think? Is Lord Shiva an extraterrestrial that gave these Indians this technology? Or am I just some crazy guy on the internet? We'll see. The Wright brothers defied the laws of physics and proved to the world that the impossible is possible. Flying has been a debate for years. What if I told you that man and birds were not the first ones to fly on God's green earth? Indian scriptures talk about flying cities and crafts called vimanas. They describe different types, like ones that could fly from place to place Vimanas that could travel across the country, and Vimanas that could travel from planet to planet. They also vividly described the propulsion system that these Vimanas used, how fast they were, how they could turn invisible, and how they had weapons to shoot down other Vimanas. The funny thing is, they say these Vimanas use mercury as fuel. But isn't NASA trying to develop a mercury-based energy source? So, do you still think I'm crazy? 
Or do we need to go to Mexico? Okay. Mexico it is. The Mayans of Mexico are one of the most popular South American civilizations. The funny thing is 95% of them just up and disappeared without a trace. How can a population of over 20 million people vanish from the face of the earth? The Mayans were exquisite timekeepers. They had various calendars where the long calendar had 5,125 years which they broke down into approximately 400 years that they called Baktuns. At the end of each Baktun, the Mayans would hold a big celebration. But on the 10th Baktun, they didn't. Look, there were no mass graves, no signs of destruction or war. And the remaining 5% say their ancestors went home. Which home? That's my question. Now let's get to the bottom of this by looking at a star constellation known as the Pleiades. The Mayan's pyramids are in the same formation as the Pleiades star constellation. Get this, most people who claim to be abducted say their abductors came from the Pleiades. So could it be that the extraterrestrials conducted a mass abduction and hence the word going home keeps on lingering in the air. Was their calendar counting down to their last days on Earth? All of this is as good as anyone's guess. If you still doubt, then tell me in the comment section down below how 19 million people just disappeared without a trace. Let's talk about Lord Pakal. In the Mayan city of Palenque, a tomb was discovered in 1950. Inside the tomb was a lid that had the following. So stay with me. Lord Pakal is seen in a bending position, almost like on a motorcycle. His nose is on some type of oxygen or air supply system. He uses his hands to manipulate some knobs the lower hand is pressing some controls and he looks like he's in some sort of capsule. What is this? Forgive me if I'm crazy, but this looks like some sort of hover bike or spacecraft. Was Lord Pakal an extraterrestrial that visited the Mayans in this craft? Well, Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. That, my friends, is the first step to our journey. Remember, I'm just a messenger, and I'm as clueless as you are. Till next time, and don't forget to keep trekking, fam. For your